certain things that Smith Wigglesworth said, John Lake, F.F. F. Bosworth, Dr. Summerall, Dake, all these people that I've read, been around, some of them, there's, there's always, seems like there's always something that sticks. And one of the things that sticks or has stuck from John Lake, one of several, many things, I guess, and I've never forgotten it because he actually said it during a major conference where he was preaching. And he said, Pentecost has failed about 90%. Meaning, it, it failed to produce what it was supposed to produce. He said about 90%. He said, because Pentecost, in Jesus' mind, was the goal of Pentecost was to reproduce Jesus in believers. He said, you're going to go out. You're going to heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils. You're going to preach the gospel. You're going to have signs and wonders. All these things are going to happen. But first, wait. And if you remember, he was very adamant in the beginning. Go, 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 go in here. Now, don't go the way of the Gentiles. Right now, just stay with the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But go, go. And he said, go quickly. And, he, and people would say, well, first, let me go. Let me, let, me, let me go say bye to my family. Let me go bury my father. No. Nope. You put your hand in the plow, look back. You're not worth it. You're not worthy of the kingdom. I mean, that's pretty harsh. I mean, that shows a, a degree of urgency. No, you no, You just let the, let the dead bury the dead. You go preach the gospel. Why? Because that's what's important. And, he said, and, and it was always like, go now. You notice he never said, Think about this. Take some time. He never really said, he, he said something similar one time when he said count the cost. But he, he didn't say, oh, no, oh, you, you want to go home and tell your family and talk with them and discuss it? That's, that's good. That's wise. You, you know, there's wisdom in counsel. So you, you go home and, and, and talk to your family and, and, y'all, and together you decide and get a consensus. And if your family agrees that you should come follow me, then you catch up. He didn't say that. He said, you let the dead bear the dead. You come and follow me. And he said, and I'm going to tell you right now, if you love them more than me, if you're going to listen to them instead of me, and you're going to let them tell you what to do, and you're not going to do what I tell you to do, you're not worth the kingdom. You're not worthy. You won't even be accepted in the kingdom. He said, you you have to love me first. And obey me first. He said, there's going to be a lot of you, a lot of you, he was talking to them. That are going to say, Lord, Lord, didn't we do this? Didn't we do that? He's going to say, I never knew you. He said, and everybody that calls me Lord isn't going to enter the kingdom. So just calling me Lord doesn't get you in. But wait a minute. I, I, you know, the preacher told me, they told everybody to bow their heads and raise their hand. And that's what I did. And, and, and he said he saw my hand. I think he was talking to me. I don't know. My head was bowed. My eyes were closed. I'm not sure if he was talking to me, but I th- think he was talking to me. And he said I was born again just because I raised my hand. Then he led us in this little prayer. And I'm pretty sure the word Lord was in there. And you're telling me I can't get in now? But see, Pentecost was supposed to, he, he, he told the disciples, Wait. Until I send the Spirit. And whenever you receive the promise of my Father, he said, then you're going to have power. And he said, and the word he, see, we have these different words. But whenever he said virtue, remember whenever the woman with the issue of blood grabbed the hold of his, the hem of his garment? And he said, no, somebody touched me. And they said, Lord, everybody's touching you. And he said, no, 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 somebody. He said, I felt virtue. Well, he didn't say virtue. He said, I felt dunamis. That's what he said. I felt dunamis go out. And, and the disciples, the same ones he's sending out, they were there. Some of them were there. And they heard. And they, they said, uh, okay, dunamis. Oh, yeah, when the woman with the issue of blood, 12 years, issue of blood, 12 years got healed. I remember that. How do I remember that? Because then right after that, we went right over to where the 12-year-old girl was, was dying, and you raised her up. So I, I, I remember that. So you're telling me dunamis is what healed that woman after 12 years? Yep. And then he said, but you shall receive dunamis after that, the Holy. Wait, now, you're saying that we're going to have the same power you do? Yep, same thing. 
The things I've done, you'll do. Matter of fact, you'll do even greater, even war. Why? He said, because I'm going to the Father. And when I do, I'll send the Spirit back. He said, and you're going to have a good time. It's going to be fun. Amen. And he said, and you're going to go. And he said, let me tell you. He said, I didn't charge you for this. I gave it to you. So don't you charge for it. You got it free, give it free. Amen? Amen? Not just for free. He said, don't even pick and choose who you give it to. Come on. Now, when you can't pick and choose, what does that mean? Give it to everybody. That means nobody can be good enough to, to deserve it. It also means nobody can be so bad they can't get it. Wow. Isn't that something? This is what Pentecost was supposed to produce. Mm -hmm. 